I just got done recording the video you're about to watch about ports, specifically for CompTIA Network Plus studying. However, what I want to do is tie it in with my last video, which covered Nmap. So really quick, what I'm going to do is demonstrate why we need to understand these ports, specifically from an ethical hacking perspective. So what we're going to do first is pull up a metasploitable box. You don't need to follow along. Basically, all you need to know is that this is a, an intentionally vulnerable computer. It's a virtualized computer. It's one we want to attack. I ran IPA on it, and that's basically going to tell me the address I want to attack. Again, last time we talked about Nmap, it's kind of like a house. This is knowing the address of the house. Now what we want to figure out is how to break into the house, which is kind of like looking, see where all the windows and doors are, right? So the internet uh, IP address here is going to be 10.0.9.6. That's all I need to know. I can close that out. What I can do here is open the terminal. In my terminal, I'm going to type nmap, and I'm going to use the options that I taught in the last video, and then I'm going to type in 10.0.9.6, and I'm going to hit enter. That's going to start pulling up a bunch of information. I've already done it on another terminal, so I'm just going to pull up my completed scan. Okay, this scan right here tells me everything about that intentionally vulnerable computer. What I want to bring your attention to is these ports. Okay, so we see port 111, 445, port 80, port 23, port 21. If you don't know what these ports are, you have no ability to maneuver on this device. You don't have the ability to perform a penetration test or whatever it is that you're trying to do. Maybe you want to secure it. If you don't know what these are, then you can't secure your device. So again, just more picture here. Uh, this is showing all sorts of information that we can receive from these ports, okay? We can figure out the service that's running on that HTTP. Maybe it's outdated, and maybe there's ways to attack it. This is the value of understanding network ports. It is vital to everything, both with networking, cybersecurity, or anything in IT. So please pay attention to these ports. It's an extremely boring video. It is a PowerPoint slide. That being said, it is vital, vital, vital to this field. Please enjoy. Today, we're diving into the essential world of network protocols and ports, especially for those of you preparing for the Network Plus certification exam, as these ports are directly from the official exam objectives published by CompTIA. In this episode, we're going to explore the intricate web of protocols and their corresponding port numbers essential knowledge for any aspiring cybersecurity professional. So what are network ports? So a port is a virtual endpoint used by a network protocol for communication. They range from number zero up to over 65,000, 65,535 to be specific. And they enable devices to differentiate and manage various types of network traffic. So there's three categories of ports. First, you have well-known ports, which are from 0 to 1023. These ports include popular services such as HTTP, FTP, and SSH. There is a second category, which is registered ports. That ranges from 1024 to 49,151. Those are used by specific application services. For example, SQL would be one of them. The third category would be dynamic or private ports ranging from 49,152 to 65,535. And those can be available for a variety of uses. The last part of our overview here, understanding the purpose of network ports. So they allow multiple servers and applications to operate simultaneously on one device. And the device will use ports to send and receive data packets for specific functions. How they work, the application will listen on a port for incoming connections, and they will communicate using a combination of IP address and port number. So the first port we're gonna talk about today is FTP, which stands for File Transfer Protocol. It operates on ports 20 and 21. It's a standard network protocol used for transfer files used to transfer files between hosts over a TCP-based network like the internet. Next up, we have Secure Shell, or SSH, which operates on port 22. SSH provides a secure encrypted connection 
for accessing remote servers and devices, ensuring the confidentiality, integrity, and authenticity of data transmission. Moving on to Secure File Transfer Protocol, or SFTP, also on port 22. SFTP is a secure version of FTP that uses SSH to encrypt data during transmission, providing secure file access, transfer, and management. Now, let's talk about Telnet on port 23. Telnet is a network protocol used for remote access to devices over a TCP IP network. It allows users to establish command line sessions on remote computers. Up next, we have the Simple Mail Transfer Protocol, or SMTP, operating on port 25. SMTP is the standard protocol for sending email messages across networks, working hand in hand with POP3 or IMAP for email retrieval. Now, onto the domain name system, or DNS, using port 53. DNS is a system that translates domain names into IP addresses, making it possible for us to access websites using easy to remember addresses. Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol, or DHCP, on ports 67 and 68. DHCP is a network protocol that automatically assigns IP addresses and network configuration to devices on a network, making our lives easier. And now, let's take a look at the Trivial File Transfer Protocol, or TFTP, on port 69. TFTP is a simplified version of FTP, used for transferring files between client and server, although lacking some security features like authentication. HTTP, standing for Hypertext Transfer Protocol, is the foundation of data communication for the World Wide Web. It enables the transfer of hypertext, which allows you to click on links, navigate websites, and access web pages. This protocol operates on the well-known port 80, ensuring seamless communication between web servers and web browsers. Host Office Protocol version 3, or POP3, on port 110 is another pro standard protocol we should know about. POP3 is used for retrieving emails from a remote server, allowing users to download messages to their local email client for offline access. Next in line is the Network Time Protocol, or NTP, using port 123. NTP is a protocol used to synchronize the clocks of, of computers and network devices, ensuring accurate timekeeping across networks. Following that, we have the Internet Message Access Protocol, or IMAP, on port 143. IMAP is a protocol used for accessing and managing email messages stored on a mail server, giving users the ability to organize emails and folders on the server. Moving on to the Simple Network Management Protocol, or SNMP, operating on ports 161 and 162. SNMP is a protocol used for managing and monitoring network devices remotely, enabling administrators to collect information and manage devices. Now let's delve into the Lightweight Directory Access Protocol, or LDAP, on port 389. LDAP is a protocol used for accessing and maintaining distributed directory information services offering a way to query and modify directory services. Moving towards secure web communications, we have the Hypertext Transfer Protocol Secure, or HTTPS, on port 443. HTTPS is the secure version of HTTP, providing encrypted communication between web servers and browsers, ensuring data confidentiality and integrity. Next up, we have the Server Message Block, or SMB, operating on port 445. SMB is a network protocol used for file sharing, printer services, and communication between devices on a network, enabling shared access to files and resources. Now, let's shed some light on Syslog, operating on port 514. Syslog is a standard protocol used for message logging 
allowing network devices to send event messages to a centralized syslog server for monitoring and analysis. SMTP with TLS or SMTP TLS on port 587 is our next protocol. It provides a secure method for sending emails from a mail client to a mail server, ensuring the encryption of email transmissions. Moving on to the lightweight directory access protocol over SSL or LDAPs on port 636. LDAPs is the secure version of LDAP, providing encrypted communication between LDAP clients and servers, enhancing security for accessing and managing directory information. Now let's talk about IMAP over SSL or IMAPs on port 993. IMAPS is a secure version of IMAP, offering encrypted communication for accessing and managing email messages stored on a server. Next is POP3 over SSL or POP3S on port 995. POP3S is a secure version of POP3, allowing users to securely retrieve emails from a server using encryption to protect the transmission. Now, a brief comparison between IMAPS and POP3S. Port 993, which is IMAPS, is used for IMAP, providing secure access to emails stored on a server. That is compared to port 995, POP3S, which is used by POP3 to provide a secure download of emails from the server to the email client. So while one provides secure access to the emails stored on the server, the other, POP3, provides secure download of emails from the server to the email client. In both cases though, SSL or TLS encryption is used to protect the confidentiality and integrity of the email communications. Next, we have SQL, or Structured Query, Query Language, on port 1433. SQL uses this port to, for communication between client applications and the SQL Server database engine, enabling querying and managing databases. Now let's explore SQLNet on port 1521. SQLNet is Oracle's networking protocol, facilitating connections and data exchange between Oracle database client applications and the Oracle server. Among the last few we'll cover today, MySQL is on port 3306. MySQL is a popular open source relational database management system and allows for database operations and queries. Moving on, we have Remote Desktop Protocol, or RDP, on port 3389. RDP is a proprietary protocol developed by Microsoft for remote desktop connections, enabling users to access and control a remote desktop over a network. So we should compare RDP with SSH. First, SSH, which operates again on port 22, provides secure command line based remote access to Unix based systems and networking devices. So in other words, one Linux might be able to connect to another Linux using SSH and it is all through the command line. RDP operating on port 3389 is proprietary Windows Microsoft application. And that offers remote desktop access with a graphical interface. Lastly, we have the Session Initiation Protocol, or SIP, on ports 5060 and 5061. SIP is a signaling protocol used for initiating, maintaining, and terminating real-time sessions, such as voice and video calls over IP networks. 
That is all of the ports that are featured in the CompTIA Network Plus certification exam. I hope that I have cleared up any confusion on the basics of any of those ports. In order to keep this video short, I only read a short blurb about each one. However, feel free to pause the video, go back, and take any notes based on the bullet points on each slide. I hope that this overview has been informative and has shed some light on the vast world of networking. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, please leave them in the comments below. Thank you.